Hello. It's Welcome to our Facebook Live for today, December 19th. It's our regular Wednesday, and it's our second staff takeover. Let's see who's here. Hi, Shirley. We're going to wait a few minutes for, or a couple seconds for people to get here, and we will get started. How's everyone doing? Is everyone ready for the holidays? I'm especially excited for Kwanzaa. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Ty Brooks, and many of you might be familiar with me because I'm the person who's normally behind the scenes. But today I am the second of our staff takeover series. And so I have come out from behind the scenes to be today's anchor. And so today we're going to talk about and discuss when you get non-African results in HAPA Group. So I hope y'all are gonna have a good time with me. And I have tried to make it as simple and understandable as possible, and I will take your questions along the way. I do want to say hi to my Uber producer, Simone Jones. <laughs> Simone was with us last week, and she discussed about how you some tips on having a successful African ancestry experience. So if you haven't already seen that video, please go over to our video section or on YouTube and watch Simone's video. Hello, hello, Dr. P. I knew you were going to be my first viewer today. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get started. Hi, Mary. Hi, Asaki. Oh, these are um, former winners of our trivia. So I hope you guys are enjoying your trivia gifts. And thanks for participating. I think a few of you are eligible to win again. So let's get started. All right. So last week, Gina went to Brooklyn and she did a reveal for True to Our Native Land. And she said it was an amazing event. So shout out to our family in Brooklyn and especially to those in, at True to Our Native Land, Chief Ayanda and his family, uh, congratulations on your African ancestry results and welcome to the African ancestry family. Uh, second, uh, we have some Independence Days to celebrate. And actually on Christmas Eve, the country of Libya will be celebrating their Independence Day. So to all of our Libyan family out there, which is in North Africa, we want to say happy Independence Day. You know, it is important for us to recognize all of our African brothers and sisters as they celebrate their Independence Day from uh, colonial rule. And so, shout out. All right. So, let's get into it, guys. So, this is what I was thinking for today's broadcast. So I was thinking, how would I introduce? And so one of the things I thought about is you go through the process, you've done what Simone has suggested, you've done your research, you purchased your tests, you got your swabs, you swabbed and you sent them back in the mail, you've waited eight to 10 weeks and you are excited to get those results. Shout out to people who will be receiving those Christmas a Christmas and Kwanzaa results because we are getting those calls and know that we're getting those things out to you as soon as possible. But you get your results, you open the package, and it says, we are pleased to announce we have analyzed your uh, results and you have found we have found your ancestry to be. Let's say European populations in haplogroup H, or for our gentlemen out there, 
your paternal ancestry was analyzed and we found it among the Spain and Portuguese people. And so you look at those results and you are in quite disbelief. You have read the product description. You've even signed the acknowledgement on your specimen information form. But you didn't think that that was going to be you. And so now I am the person who normally gets your call because everybody likes to pass those calls to me when they come to the office, which is why I'm the takeover girl for this particular subject. So you've received non-African results and you're a little baffled. Um, you want to tell me that your father is black. He's been black all his life. He's dark skinned. All of these things occur. And you got your results and it says that they're not African. And so I am here to help you understand a little bit about how that could happen. So for those of those of you who are not familiar with African ancestry, we do genetic ancestry tracing. And of course, we're looking at single lines of the family tree. We're looking at your mitochondrial DNA or your Y chromosome DNA. And so you know, those of you who have taken our tests, who've purchased our tests, know that when you're taking your mitochondrial DNA, that's a matcher clan test, there's a 92% chance that you will receive an African result. There's those of you who fall in the 8 percentile who do not receive an African result. And so you may see, see something like European populations uh, belonging to haplogroup H, Middle Eastern populations belonging to haplogroup N, Native American populations belonging to haplogroup A. Any of those things could occur. For those of you who are our men, we know that 65% of the time we yield African results for those tests. And for the other 35%, we can see uh, results such as Spain, Portugal. We will, I've seen Germany, which uh, actually Dr. Kittles, Y chromosome is German, German. And I saw one today that was Han, China. So I know that in doing this work and getting your identity, it can be life-changing anyway, either way. You get, it can be life-changing when it's African and it can be life-changing when it's not African, but I'm here to tell you not to despair. I'm here to confirm for you that you're still black. For those of you who self-identify so as, as black, we already know we're 75 to um, we're 60 to 75 percent sub-Saharan African. So it should not be a surprise that we will yield non-African results. So let's get into it. So first, what is a haplogroup? And so I did some research because I wanted to get you the scientific definition. So according to the International Society of Genetic Genealogy and their uh, uh, acronym is ISOG, I-S-O-G-G, -G, the, the, a haplogroup is or has or they define the haplogroup as a genetic population group of people who share a common ancestor on their patriline or matriline. So that means on their patrilineal or their matrilineal line, that means patrilineal is father's line, matrilineal is mother's line, that they share a common ancestor. Haplogroups are assigned letters of the alphabet and refinements consist of additional numbers and letter combinations. So a lot of you who get African results will see L1B1A or L3A4 or L3A12 or something like that. That is your haplogroup, supergroup is L, and then your refinements are those letters and numbers behind it. So in layman's terms, what does that mean for you? It means that in order for your your ancestry matrilineally to be considered African, you have to go back to haplogroup L. And if you're looking at the uh, map that's on the screen, you'll see that L0, L1, L2, and L3 are all on the continent of Africa. 
in order for your ancestry to can be, be considered African for haplo, um, for Y chromosome DNA, and that's patrilineal, it must be A, B, or E. We do not give um, haplogroups for uh, patrilineal lines, but know that if you are African, it came back to A, B, or E. So now that we know that that has to be the prerequisite, now let's dive into what it means when I get that haplogroup H or something else that doesn't say that I'm black or say that I'm African on that line. So one of the things we want you to remember is that when you are testing on a single line of your family tree, that we're only looking at that one line of the family tree, that one line, that one line of the family tree is saying from you to that parent, to that parent, to that parent, to that parent, that you are here. If there is another line, we're saying from this parent to this parent to this parent. So uh, Simone wants me to make sure that I reiterate that we've said in our description that on the matrilineal line, we find African results 92% of the time. And on the patrilineal line, we find African results 65% of the time. So now, We've established that on this particular line, not on any other lines, but right now on this particular line that you tested, it was non-African. What does that mean? It means that at some point in the 500 to 2000 years that we've tested, that there was a non-African person who made it with a possible African person to help create the person that is you. It does not take away from the fact that you are self-identified as African of the, the diaspora. It means on that one branch that you are not African. Also, the other thing that you should know is that in some haplogroups, there is African distribution, but there they cannot be considered African haplogroups because the distribution is too wide for it to be considered an African haplogroup. And we find this a lot when people get haplogroups like N, which is Middle Eastern. And then when you're looking at the geography of the map, we see that the Middle East is right over North Africa. And we also find that with haplogroup M, which we see distributed in North Africa and Asia and places like that. So that is why those things are not identified specifically as African. So when we get that, I normally get some, oh, before I stop, is there any questions that I should be taking? Okay, well, we'll keep going. I hope that you guys are following along. Uh, so now that we know that it's not African, now, some of the things that I get is, were you not able to find any African in there? And so the other thing I want you to remember is that it's one line of the family tree, which means you only have but so much DNA that we can take to look at. And so for women, you have two types we can take, autosomal DNA, which we do not test, and mitochondrial. And so with the mitochondrial DNA test, we're going from you to the mother, to the mother, to the mother, to the mother. With the Y chromosome DNA, we're looking at DNA that was given on the paternal line. So we're going from the son to the father, to the father, to the father. And so on those lines, it just means that there was an ancestor 500 to 2000 years ago who was not African. The other question that I get often is, well, don't we all trace back to Africa? And the answer to that question is yes. Mankind was is found in Africa 144,000 years ago, approximately. Mankind was found in Africa. And so we at African Ancestry are looking to establish identity and origin 500 to 2,000 years ago. So we call those in our office migration waves out of Africa. So, yes, we all trace back to Africa, but 500 to 2,000 years ago, we very well understand that there were people coming in and out 
of Africa. We also understand that one of the first migration waves was in Asia, and then there was a re-migration back to Africa. So when you get those type of things, that, those are the things you have to take into account. So I have a couple of tips for you to help you make better understanding of your results when they're non-African. So number one, when you receive a non-African result, the first thing you should do is to do some research as into what is going on or what was going on at the time in the place that we found your results. So say for instance, we get a lot of men that get Spain Portuguese results. So for those men, we know that the Spanish and the Portuguese were heavily, heavily involved in the, the shipment of human cargo. Well, with that, we know that there was some mating, not done voluntarily. There was some voluntary, but most of it wasn't. But as our AAOC member, Mike Thompson, uh, points out to the AALC that there was a time that the Spanish and Portuguese war, that Africans played a huge role in ruling what was going on in the Spain and Portuguese area. So this is important for you to make note of. Everything wasn't done by force. Some of it was done by force, but it helps to synthesize some of the information. I saw, was there a question for me? Okay. Well, I hope you guys are hanging in there. Um, I hope it's making sense to you. So the next thing is when you get a haplogroup, take context clues. So a lot of times when someone comes into the um, office or they call and they want to get understanding about what this haplogroup means and what does that mean for them. Well, if we established that all mankind was founded in Africa, then when we're looking at haplogroups, then those haplogroups have to trace back to an origin. And if for, let's say, mitochondrial DNA, we've established that that origin is haplogroup L, then we need to take those haplogroups and trace them back to L. So for example, if we go back to L and let's say we have haplogroup, let's say I've done haplogroup M, M as in Mary before. And so I believe that that trajectory back to L, it goes from M to R to N to L. So that doesn't make any sense to you right now because you're like, what is that? But haplogroup M, there have been quite a few of our people to get haplogroup M, haplogroup H, haplogroup N. Um, Wikipedia does a great job of telling you what that haplogroup is and then telling you what the ancestor haplogroup is. So it'll say, this is the haplogroup. Then here is the possible origin of this haplogroup. This is how old the haplogroup is. And this is the ancestor of the haplogroup. And so you want to get back to haplogroup L if it's mitochondrial DNA, that's your MT DNA with your Y chromosome DNA. And again, we do not provide Y chromosome DNA haplogroups, but if you have yours, like I've seen quite a few men with haplogroup R, then you want to trace your haplogroups back to A, B, or E. Is my pendant large or small? I have a, a small one, but it's cute, isn't it? You like it? Do you have one? Let me know. Okay, so the next thing is who is calling me? Someone likes me. Someone really wants to get in touch with me and they like me. Okay, so the next thing is take context clues. So when you are researching your haplogroup, like for instance, I, I'm going to use haplogroup M. I'm using haplogroup M because that was the last one I've talked to someone about. I believe haplogroup M has some distribu distribution in North Africa, 
Horn of Africa. So I tell people if I'm a melanated person and I see melanated people in my haplogroup, group, I'm going to go towards that. So if you're looking at that, then you want to say, okay, well, haplogroup has, um, haplogroup M is distributed amongst North Africa. And then, and when I'm looking in the Wikipedia, it gives me a breakdown of those African groups that are covered by M, haplogroup M. So we've seen Toreg, we've seen Egyptian, we've seen Mozabite Berbers. And so those are people that now you wanna start doing some more research. So remember 500 to 2000 years ago, there wasn't really a Nigeria, a Niger, there wasn't a Libya, there wasn't a Somalia, there weren't any of these places, they were ruled by empires. And so you want to find out, well, what empire was there? Where what, where, or who were the rulers? What were the, some of the possible migrations of these people? And that starts to help make sense of how your ancestor came to be where they are today. So I'm going to look and see if I have any questions because that's pretty much my spiel, unless there's any more deep questions before I go to our trivia. Okay. Haplogroup Don, Donald Flynn, Donna Flynn Crawford says his haplogroup is A, AL419, which means you have a African ancestor as your paternal ancestor. So more than likely, Donna Flynn, your name looks familiar to me. So remind me if we've done your paternal ancestry. If so, I think that, yeah, you should have an African haplogroup from us, but your name is familiar to me. Okay. So Simone, how did I do? How did I do guys? Do you guys understand haplogroups? If so, let's go to the trivia. All right. So in celebration of somebody's Independence Day, I came up with the following question. And the question is, what does Amaza mean? It's Amaza, because I look for this pronunciation online so I can say it correctly. What does Amaza mean? As we're waiting for the answer to the trivia, let's go over some announcements. So, you know, holiday season is on the rise. We have only but a so, so much time left before it's time for that. And so Kelly in our shipping department wanted me to let you know that from today until Friday, anything that you order that you want to get by Christmas, you should be selecting FedEx overnight as your shipping method. I'm ready for the question. Who has the question? Yes, Queen Latifah Muhammad. What about haplogroup A4? Well, I do know this. Um, I am not an haplogroup specialist, but I do know that haplogroups A, B, C, D, and X are identified as Native American haplogroups, and I'm not sure about X, but I definitely know that A, B, C, and D are identified as Native American populations. So um, there is a study that's being done by a group that's called the Native American Pacific Islander Native Learning Genetics Resource Center. And I think that they are chronicling Native American populations. So you may want to hit them up and see what kind of information that they have. I'm ready. In reviewing a lot of the posts, it looks like a lot of people are from the same concentrated area. Is there a reason or explanation for that? Well, African Ancestries database is 33,000. And you, we do tend to trend in certain areas. So we see our top five are uh, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, 
Cameroon, and Gabon. And I do know this. If you are from the Gullah Geechee area, we tend to trend with Sierra Leone. So when someone's from uh, South Carolina, we kind of make bets in here that they're probably going to come up Sierra Leone, maybe some Cameroon, maybe some are from um, Nigeria. When we see Caribbean results, we see a lot of Nigeria. We see a lot of Gabon. Um, anything else? I'm going to ask our data analytics manager because she's my producer today and she can tell us better. What else? Um, so Jamaica. Is, uh, Jamaica. We get a lot of Ghana. We get a lot of Guinea-Bissau. And, I, you know, Jamaicans, be, Jamaicans know or believe, many of them believe they're a Khan or a Shanti of Ghana. So a lot of them prove that to be correct. And sometimes it's not. So yes, we do trend, we do tend to trend, but lately I've been seeing Somali, uh, Somali come up. We, we we got a house of Mali today. We got an Omo Valley of Ethiopia. So it depends on who is actually doing the test and what line they're testing. I did. Ghana. Ghana's in there. Yes. You were talking about the Caribbean. Yeah. Guinea Bissau shows, shows up for um, Caribbean people. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. We do Brazilian get um, Brazilian people and they tend to trend with Guinea Bissau. Shout out to my Guinea Bissau family. I, I have Guinea Bissau. I'm Fula of Guinea Bissau. Most people hear me say I'm Mende and Timney and then me and Oprah are cousins because we're both Capelle of Liberia. So interesting fact, Caribbean, Brazilian people both trend Guinea Bissau, Sierra Leone, just like South Carolina, Carolina, Virginia okay? people. Do you guys hear that or do you want Simone to come over here and tell you what she's saying? She's saying something about Brazilians. She says, our Brazilian family tends to trend Guinea-Bissau, Guinea Sierra, Sierra Leone, much like, much like, our, much like our American counterparts South in the Gullah Geechee region, yeah. which is like South Carolina. I believe that's uh, Georgia. Georgia and some Alabama. Um, I'm from Alabama, but most people, Virginia. Virginia. So it gets it gets interesting, and actually, I I get to hear a lot of people's stories. Like, um, shout out to my friend Olusula, who is in London right now, and Olusula was talking to me about his father's ancestry, which is his father is Nigerian, but that's not what we found on that line. So he was he he understood it, but. He thought it was so funny and he could not wait to tell his father. Yes, I'm ready for another question. Thank you for hosting the live. My maternal haplogroup is W. Do you see this group often in your non-African results? I'm not as familiar with W, but I have seen W. And Latasha, if you call me next week, because I'm not going to be in tomorrow, but I will be in on Monday. If you call me next week or actually send a Facebook message, I will show you how to go back from W to L. And also we can look for who are some of the um, melanated people in your line. Any other questions? All right. Anybody get the trivia? What does Amaza mean? I'm excited because I think it means something great. Uh, we do have one question while I'm double checking. Yes. Um, Amaza, 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 How do y'all like it? How do y'all like me on this side of the camera? I kind of like it. You know, I'm a photographer part time and, you know, I like to be uh, in front of the camera and in back of the camera. So it's kind of cool. Yes. Hi, sister. Will I be able to, to view this video again? You most certainly will. First, um, when we end the broadcast, it will be posted on our Facebook page. But 
after um shortly after we download the video and we upload it to our YouTube channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to the African Ancestry YouTube channel, you can go there too. We put our Facebook lives up there as well. All right. Nobody, nobody knows what Amaza mean. We didn't Google, because I know y'all Google these. <laughs> All right, we got more questions. Well, again, there's still time to get kits, head wraps, fans, and note cards. But a direct message from our good friend Kelly in the shipping department. Kelly is the shipping department. And she says, from now until Friday. You must select FedEx overnight if you expect to receive these gifts before Christmas. If you are okay with getting them for Kwanzaa and in the new year, do shipping as regular. But if you want to receive them for Christmas, choose FedEx overnight as your shipping. All right. So maybe you guys didn't answer the question because I didn't show you what you would get. That's a pretty spiffy t-shirt. Does that does that sweeten the pot a little bit? I know, right? I didn't tell you what you were going to win if you if you did it. And you get to choose your size. You don't have to do the size small. Ty doesn't you do a size small in anything, so <sighs> Well, let's see. I think that's it for me. Well, here's a here's a couple of things to let you know. If no one gets the prize, then hey, it's okay. It's no problem. Let's see here. So we're going into the Christmas holiday. So when I end this broadcast, I would like to wish a happy holiday. To all of you, thank you guys for tuning in to our Facebook Live. We appreciate it. We really work hard in bringing you good content. So if there's, if there's things you'd like to see or you'd like for us to cover, definitely let us know. Also, whatever your reason for the season, be safe and be festive. And I also want to let you know, we will be back next week. Gina Page is back. We've given her a couple weeks off. But Gina Page is back next week, and we will be celebrating the first day of Kwanzaa, which is Umoja. And if you have a chance to see the Africa Umoja show, please go see it. It's the story of South Africa, but it is so, so good. And so every time I say the word Umoja, it makes me want to sing that song. I'm not going to do it because I want you guys to remain on the broadcast. But... If we don't have any further questions, and if no one has answered the trivia, then my name is Ty Brooks, and it's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.